Austria. It's the only place I've ever been abroad to snowboard and I can't really fault it. Sure, you might get crazy powder over in Japan or have slightly longer peace in the French Alps, but if you're looking for a place to visit with great food, drink, brand new equipment and hundreds of kilometres of interlinked runs to bomb down whilst not wanting to break the bank, then this place might be the ideal spot for you. When I think of skiing holidays, there are about seven locations that pop into my head. Canada, Japan, New Zealand, France, Austria, Italy and Bulgaria. Yeah, there's other spots in and outside of Europe, but I'm going to put my neck on the line and say that these are probably the most popular places to visit nowadays, depending on where you live, of course. But for the past 10 years, I've been visiting Austria, more specifically, this region in Northern Tyrol. This resort is made up of eight or so decent sized towns, with the biggest of the lot being Kitzbühel, which you might have heard of since it hosts a round of the Alpine Ski World Cup on the infamous Hanningkarn Mountain, where a lot of Eastern Europeans squeeze into Lycra and then fling themselves down what is essentially a 2,000 metre cliff. Barmy, innit? Full disclosure before I crack on though, I'm going to be reeling off the figures that I've just paid in February to try and keep this as accurate as possible. Yes, there's going to be a few variables, you might choose a different resort to stop in or decide to travel there on a skateboard to save a few quid on flights, but for the most part the prices are fairly similar across the country. Right, so how to get there? There's actually quite a few different ways, so I guess it kind of depends where you're coming from and how many people you're going with. I have to travel from the northeast of England, so we tend to fly rather than have an absolute grueler of a drive. The closest airport is Salzburg, but generally speaking, if you fly to Munich Airport, it's considerably cheaper, if you book it well in advance. From there, there are train links which take you near enough where you want to be, you just need to jump in a cab to get to your hotel. Or you could do what we did and just drive straight from the airport by hiring a rental car for the week. It might work out a little bit more expensive when you include fuel, but you can use it whenever you like. You do have to pay to use the Austrian motorways, but it's only €9.20 for a 10 day pass. Or you could do what I did and as soon as you enter the country, find the A road that runs parallel to the motorway and just use that instead. Hey, I got a free upgrade to this bad boy and all, didn't I? Track weapon. Hotels. There's plenty of them to suit any budget. You might fancy going self-catering in a big old chalet, but after a long day's drinking, oh, I mean snowboarding, it's uh, nice to have someone to make your tea for you, innit? That's why we chose to go half board. So for around 100 euros per night per person, you can expect to stay in a good four-star hotel, which includes a decent breakfast, a place to keep your boots and board secure, and a nice Austrian-style three-course meal on an evening. Usually, they'll have a sauna you can use as well, which is just what you need after a hard day on the slopes. Before you get on those slopes though, you're going to need some equipment if you don't have your own gear. Now the Austrians have an abundance of rental shops dotted all over the towns as well as mobile workshops in the form of converted vans. Ski or board hire for the week will set you back around 80 euros. For that price you get a really well maintained pair of skis or snowboard that you can alter or change with no hassle at any point during the week if it doesn't suit your riding style. And if you need to rent boots and other clothing you can do that for roughly another 50 euros depending on what you need. The last thing you have to buy before jumping onto the chairlift is your ski pass, and it's quite a big chunk of money, I'm not going to lie. This year the pass cost me €288, Euros. however that was only for access to half of the chairlifts and gondolas, which isn't bad considering there's still around 230 kilometres worth of descents to fly down. More than enough for one week. Well, yeah, six days. Don't worry though, if you want to explore the other range of mountains along with another 270 kilometres worth of piece, you don't have to double up on the price. Maybe they discount it, Luke, and it's about 200 euros or something like that. Wrong. It's another 6 euros. That's right, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Work that one out. So for 294 euros all in, you have a ski pass that gives you access to skid down over 500 kilometres of Austria's finest hills. It's not like that money's going into someone's back pocket either, you can see the constant upgrades and improvements that they're making with a dosh. Bigger gondolas to speed up the queues, heated and covered chairlifts for when the weather takes a turn for the worse, and if you get the chance you'll probably want to take a ride in the 3S barn which is a massive cable car that suspends you over 400 metres in the air and stretches over a 3.7 kilometre wide valley. If that wasn't bad enough for someone who doesn't like heights, there's even a cab with a glass floor. Nah. That just leaves us with the important stuff, the food and drink. Typically the way us Brits decide whether a place is worth visiting or not is the price of a pint, and it's good news if you like a sup. On average, across all of the restaurants and bars that I've visited, Eine Grosse Beer, which is just shy of a pint, costs €4.50. Euros yeah, it's not mega cheap, but it's nearly half the price that you pay in some resorts in France, and it's always a good slur. There's no foster served here, mate. You definitely won't go hungry on the mountain either, pretty much every run has a pit stop at the top, middle or bottom and the average price for a meal for one with a drink is about 15 euros. When I say meal I'm talking about an absolute gut buster. The portions are huge. If you want something a little lighter, the soups and salads start from around 4 euros and go up to about 12. So you can eat on a bit more of a budget and don't have to worry about getting a stitch halfway down a block on the afternoon. 
If you just want to stop off to warm up and have a quick brew, then hot and soft drinks seem to be about 4 euros, regardless of where you are or what you're ordering. Altogether then, this is what I spent over the course of the week. Our flights were from Newcastle to Munich and there was four of us sharing the hire car from the airport to the resort. By the time we filled the tank of the car and handed it back, we spent about 180 euros on travel, which wasn't bad considering we did visit a few different places throughout the week too. Board rental? 80 euros. This is probably the last time that I'll rent a board just because I fancy getting my own for next year, but I save money by not having to shell out on boot or clothing rental since I've got all my own equipment, even if it did take a slight detour at the airport, but that's a story for another day. A standard 294 euros for the ski pass. Accommodation worked out to be 707 euros altogether, and I spent pretty much exactly 200 euros on food and drink over the seven days, making it a grand total of 1,461 euros, or 1,220 quid. On average, it's about £1,000 for a week of skiing in Bulgaria, so I think it's definitely worth the extra couple of hundred quid if you can afford it, because the resorts and slopes over there are tiny in comparison to Austria. On the other hand, it seems like a bit of a bargain if you compare it to France or Italy, when the average price of a week of skiing in those two locations is just over £2,000. If you think €294 Euros is expensive for a ski pass, we bumped into a German woman who'd lived in Colorado for 13 years, and she said that a ski pass up in Aspen can be as much as $200 per day, which is mind-blowing. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you enjoyed it, you can leave it a like, and if you want to see more from me, you can subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!